Mars is a world long imbued with possibilities. At the end of the 19th century, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli noted markings running down the planet. Lattices of double lines, he connected them in a vast global network. He imagined they were immense structures that would carry melting snow from the poles to the dry interior. The American astronomer Percival Lowell saw in these canals the future of Earth. Here was a dying civilization trying to rescue itself from a global ecological crisis. What was the planet like up close? The author H.G. Wells sought to fill in the blanks with an article, The Things That Live on Mars based upon scientific reasoning in conformity with the very latest astronomical revelations. Wells described an arid ecosystem with moisture mainly from below in seasonal floods from the melting of the snow caps and not as rain from above. The typical Martian plant, he said, will probably be tall and have its bunches and clusters of spiky bluish-green leaves upon uplifting reedy stalks. He reasoned that with the force of gravity just three-eighths that of Earth, the limit of height and size in terrestrial plants is probably determined largely by the work needed to raise nourishment from the roots to their topmost points. That work would be so much less upon Mars that it seems reasonable to expect bigger plants there than any that grow upon the Earth. He imagined animal forms adapted to tall, thin vegetation. There will be not only flyers and climbers, but waders, long-legged forms. Clearly, he said, the dominant species will have been evolved out of some species or other, just as man has been evolved from among the land animals of this globe. How far are these beings likely to resemble terrestrial humanity? Assuming Mars had an atmosphere like ours, Wells wrote that if a man were transferred suddenly to the surface of Mars, he would find himself immensely exhilarated as soon as he had got over a slight mountain sickness. He would weigh not one half what he does upon the earth. He would prance and leap. He would lift twice his utmost earthly burden with ease. But if a Martian came to the earth, his weight would bear him down like a cope of lead. He would weigh two and two-thirds times his Martian weight, and he would probably find existence insufferable. Wells conceded that his theories were ultimately imaginative leaps of speculation. How wild and extravagant all this reads, he wrote. We now know that surface temperatures average minus 50 degrees Celsius. Its thin atmosphere is dominated by carbon dioxide. And yet, Mars remains a world imbued with possibilities. We now scour its surface for water that may have once spawned living organisms. For potential landing spots for future astronauts. 
and for minerals to support a permanent human presence. But our leaps of the imagination are not limited to Mars. As we scour the galaxy for sun-like stars with solar systems and Earth-like planets, we scan these distant worlds for radio signals that may have leaked into space, or were deliberately beamed across the void by intelligent creatures trying to connect with us. Are these aliens curious like us? Or are they searching, like the Martians of Schiaparelli and Lowell, for a way to survive?